Hey, what's up guys? My name's Spook Luke and I am a full-time Rocket League coach. My challenge today is to explain one Rocket League concept in five levels of difficulty. The topic, air roll. I'm confident that everybody watching can leave this video with some level of understanding. Also, I'm accepting new coaching recruits, so if you want to get coached by me, head down to the description and send me the word air roll on Discord. Hey, what's up, Flame? How's it going? Uh, okay, how about you? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Yo, what's your rank exactly? Uh, gold one. Your gold one, and what game mode is that in? Two's gold two, and one's gold one. Gotcha, gotcha. So you're currently sitting gold one. So, Flame, do you know uh, the difference between directional air roll and normal air roll? Have you heard of that before? Air roll, right. And then just like air rolling wherever you want. Right, right. A lot of people don't know in Rocket League, there are actually two air roll types, right? You have the yeah. normal air roll, where you can use your joystick to pivot left and right, and then you have the dedicated air roll, where you just click the button and you spin that way the whole time, right? Good for half flips. Yes, good for half flips, that's right. A lot of people don't know, yeah, you should actually have both buttons binded. When do you use, let me ask you, Flame, when do you use air roll right versus normal air roll? If we got possession and we're heading towards a net, half flips I usually use air roll right. And then yeah. in the rare occasion where I just sort of like go out for an air dribble and usually fail, <laughs> I usually use normal air roll. Yeah, let's talk. Let's let me give you a little tip here. Here's what I tell players, and this will help you a lot with your air dribbles uh, flame. Whenever you are making a single touch play, that's when you use yeah. joystick air roll. But if you're going for a long term carry, right? think you're going to be in the air for a long time that's when it's good to use directional air roll because you can practice those fine movements to keep the ball in the air so whatever you're going off the wall practice for you using air roll right that'll help a lot uh that's pretty cool well hey flame thanks for coming on that's super helpful yeah no problem thank you for having me Ray. yo what's up danny Hey, I'm feeling good. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All right. Let's talk air roll. So, Danny, you are currently... What are your ranks at the moment? Um, plat 3 in 3s and in 2s and plat 2 in 1s. Gotcha, gotcha. So you're like mid-upper plat. Interesting, interesting. So what do you know about air roll? Like, I know how to turn while air rolling a bit, but I still can't control it fully. Interesting, interesting. And what do what types of air roll do you use? Do you use a directional air roll? Do you use normal air roll? I use uh, both. I use uh, normal air roll and left and right. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you've been, you've been following the tips. I like it. Let's talk a little bit about individual adjustments in air then, because I think that's the perfect point you're at right now. What do you know about adjusting using air roll in the air? Um. I know two directions you told in a video, like with the joystick upright and downright to uh, turn right and uh, left. I like, look at that! Wait, do that again! Come on, that was killer! Yeah, there's the right adjustment and there's the left adjustment. There is my uh, problem. While doing this, I lean to the back or to the front and I can't uh, catch the car at that moment. Ah, I see. You started to learn the individual adjustments, but you don't have the control down in the air, right? Exactly. So let me show you a third adjustment. Um, so you're familiar okay. with what a tornado spin is, correct? I I think it's this, no? A tornado spin is when you hold air roll and push your joystick in the opposite direction you air roll. So for air roll left, it's holding air roll left and pushing to the right. You see how your front wheels go up and your back wheels go down when you do a tornado spin, right? Yeah, yes. Well, we can actually take advantage of that to control our speed. So take a look at this. Tell me when in my spin, here's a little question for you, when my wheels are facing the highest. I think when you are uh, showing a bit like this. When I'm upside down, right, perfect. Yeah, that's exactly right, that's exactly right. When you're halfway through the spin, on a tornado spin, your wheels are facing the highest. So check this out. What you can do is tornado spin until your wheels are facing up. And then right when they're facing up, you let go of your joystick and just start normal air rolling. 
and you can keep okay. doing that to lift the front wheels of your car into the air. So you go halfway through your tornado spin, and then you stop tornado spinning, and then you just let go, and look, the nose of my car is suddenly facing forward, right? Or it's facing yes. upward. And you can use yeah, that, that to control your speed, right? So now you yeah. see, you can go left using down and to the right. You can go right using up and to the right. And now you can control your speed using straight to the right, right? A tornado spin. That's, that's, that's amazing. Hey. hey, how's it going? What's up, Daniel? I'm good. Very nice. Look at that. Look at that time. I know it was super last minute. Thanks for hopping on. Yeah, of course. No problem. Where mm -hmm. are you currently at with learning air roll? You said you're diamond, correct? Yes. So, like, I can kind of do it. And it's easier when I'm actually, like, moving forward. But Not I can, bad. You're continuous air roll. Yeah, yeah. You're spinning pretty consistently. When? Yeah. What? When did you start learning air roll? I'd say, like... A month ago like whenever your video dropped so you're at the point currently in your aerial training where you're just practicing the individual adjustments going right going left um, yeah and controlling like going up really will be and my going next up. Step. when in game are you using each one directional aerial i mostly use like if i'm on the lawn i just want to go like that i actually use uh, general aerial when i'm like hitting an aerial and I want to make sure my car doesn't like get hit with the recoil. Let's talk about that because I was talking with the last guy and he's currently just working on using air roll without the ball. Of course, the reason we use air roll is it allows us to hit the ball with the exact part of the car we want to hit it with. And I really like mm -hmm. your tip. I think this is something that you're getting at already. A lot of players get really disoriented when they jump mm -hmm. off the wall and go for a shot. <laughs> Explain to me how you get your car from being sideways on the wall to being like it's facing downward, just like you're driving on the ground. What is the adjustment that you're doing there? Uh, I haven't really consciously thought about it too much, but just doing it right there, whatever wall I'm jumping off of. So if I'm jumping off the right side, all right, use the air roll in that direction yeah yeah absolutely a lot of people don't realize that and they'll go off the one wall and they'll use the same air roll on both walls and if you only use like <laughs> one air roll your car if you're not comfortable being upside down it can get really confusing right yeah yeah so just to reiterate that it's off the right wall air roll right if the wall's on the left side jump air roll left Whenever I would just go off the wall with it, like the big thing for me was if I'm not in the right orientation and I'm trying to boost, like I'm just going in the wrong direction. So like I focused first on getting the right orientation and then boosting. Let's talk about a couple more situational uses of air roll. You said you're using this adjustment, this uh, tornado spin to lift the mm -hmm. front of your car up. Let me give you a classic situation where I use this all the time. So when you're doing a ground to air dribble, right? You have the ball in your car and you're going to dribble. You need to, naturally, you need to pop the ball up using your double jump. And what that does is it sends the ball out a little bit in front of you. And so something I like to do, if you can see where I'm going, is you can use that swooping adjustment, this, this one, and you can use that adjustment to lift the ball back mm. and up from under you. The adjustments using the front of your car are a good learning point when you're starting in just rings. You know, it's a good step to the to the learning process, but realistically in game, you have to learn where the adjustments actually take place. And one of the mm -hmm. classic examples is when you're air dribbling, if you ever need to lift the ball up, that's when you use the height adjustment. Um, if you're going left or right off the wall, that's when you use the left adjustment. And that's where it all starts to come full circle into play. What's up, Wayden? <laughs> Back from the DMV, alive. Yeah, oh my God, so glad it's done. Right now I've talked to a, uh, a gold, a plat, a diamond, and you are my GC. You're my GC. GC one, correct? Yeah. Well, GC two now in threes, actually. Oh yeah. So I guess, like, 
see, we have a different history with learning air roll. I I tried to science my pseudoscience my way through it, <laughs> um, and to to not much avail. And I know you took a little bit of a different route to trying to learn it. Can you talk about what learning air roll was like for you? Yeah. So for me, there's there, there's some good there's some good choices that I made when learning air roll and some bad choices. An example of a bad choice that I made is when I first started off, I was like jumping and then just spinning for no reason, just, like before I even learned how to aerial properly. What I did, the bit, the main process for what I used to learn aerial was just through air dribbles. Like you can get away with just spinning for no reason on aerials, but for air dribbles, you have to learn how to do it normally before you learn how to do it with holding aerial the whole time. Uh, once I did that, I added spins just because I thought it was cool. <laughs> and then yeah. I eventually learned when the spins were actually necessary. And in many situations, it's better to not air roll. You know, it's it's different for each situation. So learning how to do both is essential. Yeah, yeah, I 100% agree. I so I see you kind of you learned it the hard way, right? You you kind of went through. And yeah, said, I kind of I kind of just experimented my way through it and then like figure out how to do it normally, figure out how to do it completely with air roll. And then I found the kind of middle ground and used each one accordingly. Gotcha. Gotcha. What are your thoughts on using tornado spins while air rolling? And how do you how do you do that? Uh, so for me, I actually don't have a universal air roll bound. I only have air roll right and air roll left. So for me, it's almost all like that tornado spin, you know, like that sort of a uh, pivoting where you're like pointing the stick in one direction and like that kind Very of this motion that I'm doing here. To me personally, it's just kind of weird to be able to only tornado spin in one direction. It just feels <laughs> asymmetrical in a way. So yeah. I prefer to just, if I need to do it to the left, I just do it to the left. If I need to do it to the right, do it to the right. Simple as that. Yeah, I see what you mean. Because with the way I have to teach it, if you only bind one air roll in one direction, you have to use these diagonal adjustments to turn yourself right and to turn yourself left. There's not a clear cut way. Whereas when you just have air roll left or roll right, you can just do the same thing the opposite way. Yeah, because what I was going to ask, and maybe I'll have to save this question for our level five guy, um, but what are the situations where you use air roll left versus normal air roll? And you just, you only have directional. You only have your two directions bound. Right. Right. What do you think like the the take home lesson is with there are so many different like options for how you can learn air roll different ways, different binds. So let's say somebody's watching this right now and they're just getting started learning air roll. How what sort of tips can you speak from experience to point them in the right direction to maybe not make the same mistakes you did? The biggest tip that I can give for learning air roll is to be extremely patient with it because I mean that you can like there's plenty of guides out there like you've made you've made plenty of them Luke but uh, that you can only they can only point you in the right direction and there really is no specific answer that is going to immediately click in your brain like I, I, I often get people that ask me like hey how long did it take for you to learn arrow like that and that's just an impossible question to answer because it's there, there wasn't a day where I was like, okay, I can air roll like this now. It, 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 there was never a day like that. It was a constant, like steady improvement that was hard to even notice day by day and sometimes even week by week. But it was definitely there. Like when I look back on it, obviously I'm way better now than I originally started. So of course, my biggest tip is be patient. It, it will come over time, but it's one of the slowest mechanics to learn in the game. So, I mean, you know, the challenge is you are my level five for air roll. What are your current? I mean, I, everybody knows you from being an RLCS coach and that <laughs> not everybody knows your current ranks. Uh, currently, I'm sitting in GC3 and everything. I've gotten SSL in everything uh, since season one. Usually I wait till the end of the season to just grind it out. I don't play too much rank, so we're sitting at GC3. <laughs> Casually. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like sweating four hours a day. <laughs> GC1 is just unbreakable. <laughs> Could you walk me through what your experience learning air roll looks like? Okay. Um, yeah, so when the game first came out, that's when I got it. 
Um, and I saw all these high level players doing these like, oh my God, they would air roll to get the right angle. Like that's so cool. So I started practicing air rolls pretty early on the neutral like uh, joystick air roll. I, I call it the joystick air roll because that's the one that you use your joystick to air roll with. Um, I found half flips as the next mechanic I wanted to learn. And I saw something about how if you use an air roll bind with a, a flip cancel, it like makes the half flip easier. And so I bound air roll right for the first time. Uh, I think maybe like a year into playing the game, I bound air roll right for half flips. And I started using it for half flips. And then I started realizing that I could use that air roll with my joystick to get movements you can't get with regular air roll. Yeah. Yeah, I see, I, I see what you mean. What is the difference between air roll at the high levels then versus now? Uh, air rolls then, back in the day, uh, were pretty much only used for recoveries or accuracy. Um, rarely you saw people using air rolls to kind of keep the opponent guessing. Uh, nowadays, people are so good at air rolls that they're able to kind of keep themselves in constant motion so that the opponents have a harder time reading what's going on. So it's gone from making adjustments that you need to to now uh, constant motion to throw your opponent off. How do you like approach teaching air roll? Like, let's say somebody came to you and was completely fresh or mm -hmm. very introductory. They knew why air roll is important, but they had no mechanical base. What are some good ways to learn and bad ways to learn? If we're talking regular air roll, I would just have them go into a private match with full boost or a workshop map if they have them and tell yeah. them to hold themselves in the air as long as they could while holding air roll. Um, and so if you go into the air and hold air roll the whole time and just try and keep yourself in the air, I would tell them just keep moving, keep doing things that like make you uncomfortable. And as soon as you get into a position that you can't recover, try to remember what that position was and put yourself in it and give yourself that opportunity to practice controlling that position. Um, and, and once you get good enough to kind of hold yourself in the air for, you know, indefinitely, then you want to start giving yourself objectives. Like, let me spin while I'm taking uh, laps around the ball, a circle around the ball in the midfield, or uh, let me do air roll on a rings map if you have workshop maps. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. I think you're actually like getting at something that I, that I think a ton of new players get wrong. Could you expand a little bit more on why you tell people that you that you coached to remember the position where they crashed? Why do you tell them to, to remember that position? Because a lot of people think that it, uh, maybe not think consciously, but a subconscious feeling of, oh, I messed up. Let me just keep keeping myself in the air. You can keep yourself in the air all day if you don't put yourself in that uncomfortable position. So instead of avoiding that position and teaching yourself, let me just never put myself there. You wanna specifically go to that position and teach yourself how to control it because Rocket League is such a short game. You've got a five minute game. You're probably, if you play Rocket League, you know, like like uh, as your main game, you're probably gonna play a thousand games in the year. So if you put your, you know, if you put yourself in a thousand games, you're gonna put yourself in tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of situations. And every one of those situations, it's almost impossible not to run into a spot that you would be uncomfortable. So it's really important that you focus on those weak points and really pull yourself into controlling everything so that you always have the option to control yourself. Yeah, and, and I would say if if you're struggling with learning this air roll in particular, air roll right or air roll left binds with a joystick, um, you, you might not have the level of control with some of the basics you need before moving into that. So I would suggest learning how to control yourself in flight uh, completely, you know, sideways, staying the same side and then flying completely sideways the other way, staying on that side and then upside down and right side up. Because you have to remember when you're using air roll right or left, you're in that constant motion. So you're constantly switching between these positions of I'm flying sideways. Now I'm flying upside down. Now I'm flying sideways again. So if you can't control yourself flying sideways by itself it's going to be difficult to combine it with the constant motion of switching in and out of flying in different directions yeah that's huge that's huge and i think this is something that um the higher level players we're going through the levels here all understand and some of the lower level players are a little anxious to you would you you'll laugh at this but the gold the level one I couldn't, I can't freaking find a bronze or silver these days. It's impossible. <laughs> They're myths. <laughs> but, they don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> I found, I found a gold and we were going through and he was continuous air rolling more than my plat, more than my diamond and even more than waiting when he was demonstrating. Mm. And it's like, 
and there's and it's funny because you would think you think it'd be the opposite way around but it's actually knowing when to air roll and and knowing when it's necessary is so so important so many people just get trigger happy and they just try to hold it down when in Absolutely. actuality they the control just isn't there <laughs> it's yeah i mean i i tell this to everybody it's it's really important that you learn how to do it all the time but practicing and playing are different when you're practicing you have the freedom to do whatever you want, but when you're playing, you have to keep yourself disciplined. And so you have to learn how to discipline yourself and tell yourself, okay, I need to air roll exactly this much and then stop air rolling because that's all I need to do. It's all about efficiency. I don't want to air roll more than I need to because then I'm just, I'm expending resources. I'm using too much boost. I'm unlining myself up. Um, you want to be able to use that air roll and know what your end result looks like so that you can let go of that air roll when you know you need to. Yeah. Facts, 100%. All right, guys, that was air roll at five levels of difficulty. Now, if you want to see more, I am currently recruiting again for my coaching. So if you want to get coached by me, head down to the description below, click on the link to join my Discord server and DM me with the word air roll on Discord. If you DM me the word air roll, I'll know you came from this video and we can talk if you're interested in the coaching program. While you're there, also feel free to apply to the Discord. I've been spending tons of hours behind the scene with my team completely revamping the Discord server to truly make it the best Rocket League server out there right now. Other than that, that's all I've got for this video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.